188. Wow. What is up, Nerf Nation? I'm Naptown Nerf, and today we're doing an unboxing and review of the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1. All right, you guys, so the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1 is finally here. I'm super excited. It took a while for this thing to get released. Well, fully released anyways. I guess Target had problems getting their full inventory in. I don't know if that has to do with this virus situation. I honestly am, don't think it did, but maybe it did. I don't know. Nevertheless, it's here now. Let's check it out. So this box is really small, a lot smaller than I expected it to be. So that's very interesting. And obviously it's not too flashy because this is only gonna be available at target.com. Not expecting to see these on shelves. Uh, you may catch one on shelves if someone returns one, I don't know, but this box definitely was not meant to be on shelves, which is cool. It's meant to be shipped. It's very compact, probably half the size of the last one. So that's the Mark 1. This is the Mark 1.1. This is a tad bit thicker, but way, way smaller. If you wanna see my review on this, definitely click the link above because this was a collector's edition that was released back in like October. And that is a very in-depth review. We'll see how this one compares and how this one is better in this video. So stay tuned. So let's go ahead and crack this thing open and see what's inside. So that's what the inside looks like. And it says, do not return to store. That is very interesting to me. So there's the insides of the package. We'll go ahead and remove all the goodies and see what we got to work with. So you have to just get your back portion of the blaster and your barrel front priming portion of the blaster. These two things just slide together. Just like that. We got our darts, our plastic barrel, which I'll go over in a second, and then our two thumb screws. We will need those to secure our priming bars. So we'll go ahead and grab those two guys. So we wanna make sure that our priming bars are lined up with our bolt sled and thread those guys in. Then we need to locate our two pins and that looks like it's underneath the barrel portion here. So we'll go ahead and slide our pins in. And yes, the pin, especially the top one, is still way too long. And that is very disappointing to me. This is one thing that you think that they would have fixed in a large scale production run. The CETA has pins that are the right size to each hole that they go into, but these, they just made two that are exact same length and that just does not look good at all, in my opinion, and very tacky, for especially for a premium product like this that they're selling for $150. And that is the retail price of this blaster, which is a little bit lower than the collector's edition Mark I version, Although that one did come with some extra goodies, uh, more darts, which is about a $30 price point. So that kind of evens it out. This one is in red. Obviously the Mark I is in orange. The gray part though is the same color. Kind of wish they would have gone with black to be honest, but you know, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and throw our iron sights on here and set up the rest of the blaster. So to a Attach your foregrip, you will need a screwdriver to undo four screws. And this just butterflies in half. And then we can attach it to our Picatinny rail. And because this is Picatinny, you can put any other foregrip that attaches to Picatinny. So any sort of like airsoft foregrip or real steel foregrip should fit on there. But that's how that goes on. And we'll just lock down our four screws and we should be good to go. So along with everything we have here on the blaster, you also get a full length magazine and a half length magazine, a plastic barrel that should allow you to shoot other types of darts besides the Dart Zone Pro darts. You get a tool that is supposed to help you clear jams, I believe, but also is very handy for actually releasing the spring. And I show you how that is done in my mod guide for the Dart Zone Mark I. If you're interested in checking that out or interested in doing anything internally to this blaster or your Mark I, I would highly recommend checking that video out before doing so. But this actually also stores back here in the stock behind the rubber section. And you will also find two O-rings for your pusher there. So it's nice that they have a little area for everything to be stored just kind of slides down in there and then kind of pushes in to lock in and then you can re 
put this back on and it's nice and secure in there and you will have easy access when needing it. So that's pretty cool. So you also will get 15 full length and half length darts in your package. You can buy refill packs of these from Dart Zone on their website. So definitely look into that because these darts are awesome. They are definitely the best half length and full length dart in my opinion for sealed breaches. So that's really cool. They did an awesome job designing these and I'm hopeful that they will sell them individually because right now you can only get them both together. You have to buy full lengths and half lengths together. So that's a little disappointing, but I've heard that they are planning on selling them separately in the future. So I'm definitely gonna stay tuned for that. You also get some instructions that can be very handy for a blaster that's a little bit more complicated than your normal Nerf blaster. Let's go ahead and see what this baby's got. All right, so let's quickly go over the features of the blaster. Obviously this is a pump action blaster that will prime both half length and full length darts. So we will release this. This is actually an adapter that goes with your half length magazine so you can fire half length darts. You will have to remove that though to fire full length darts. So we'll go ahead and throw in our full length magazine. There we go. And you prime forward and now you have a dart ready to fire. So we have a full Picatinny rail on top here. They do give you two iron sights, but they are very cheap iron sights. They're very ratchety, very toy-like, but you can put any of your, you know, airsoft or real seal compatible sights on there because it is legit Picatinny rail. So that is really cool. We do have an M4 style stock, so this can come all the way off. I've heard that this has been redesigned so it does not collapse. That's pretty darn stable. I know like it was the worst when it was fully extended. Seems pretty legit there. That's pretty awesome. So that is very, very stable and a much improved part of this blaster because that was a problem with a lot of the models. Nevertheless, you can re replace this stock if you so choose with any other M4 Airsoft or Real Steel firearm stock. You may have a little bit of issue getting it on or off. So I would suggest trimming out this portion right here. This is the same problem with a CETA. It has this little plastic part here. If you remove that, they'll slide on much easier and remove a lot easier. So just a little suggestion there. We do have a safety on this blaster. Right now it is in fire mode. We can push it that way and now it is in safe mode. So it just kind of pushes back and forth similar to rival blasters uh, that have safeties on them. So that's pretty cool. So this blaster has the exact same shell, just a different color from the Mark I. But the best part about that blaster and about this blaster is this very comfortable grip. It is in my opinion, the best grip that has ever been on a Nerf blaster. So give them a lot of props for that grip. The foregrip, very comfortable. I wish it had that rubber part on it too, but I understand that would make it difficult, obviously to get uh, on and off. They would have had to redesign the way they attach this to the Picatinny rail. And I don't really care for the four screws to be honest, but if you're gonna use this, obviously you probably are gonna lock it on once and leave it. So it's not that big of a deal. They also have an interesting part in here that keeps the darts from popping up out of the magazine. I think that's a really cool innovative thing that they've done and it moves up as you prime forward and back. So that's pretty cool. You may be able to see that a little bit better uh, when we do a firing demo. So let's go ahead and fire this thing off. See if it still has that awesome performance. I'd say so. That's pretty darn sweet. Let's go ahead and take this thing outside, put it over the chronograph and the range, see if it's still getting that 170 FPS and make sure this thing can fire other darts. I'm really hopeful that it can fire other darts this time uh, with one of the two barrels at least, but we'll put a full test over the chronograph and make sure. Let's go do it. All right, so we'll go ahead and start out with some of the long bamboo darts or Dart Zone Pro darts and see how those are performing. Super straight, 170. 60, 167. 159, 159, 168, 168. All right, now the half-length darts, and just so you're aware, these 
magazines are not compatible with other blasters, but other magazines are compatible with this blaster. So we can use a Katana mag with a Katana adapter or a Talon mag with a Talon adapter or a 3D printed adapter will work in this, at least the ones that I have do. So that's awesome, but these are not backwards compatible. So I just wanted to state that. 188, wow, that's high. 174, 175, 185, Whew. 177. That's performing even better, I think, at least, you know, according to this chronograph, I'm assuming it's as accurate as it was before, uh, even higher than last time. So that's pretty good. We will try some other types of darts now. These are actually the new jet darts. They are a re pack, uh, re, uh, I guess, branded Pack D dart or the design at least of the Pack D dart. I only have a couple of those because I don't have very many. Uh, these are what come with your C to S now. They didn't come with my C to S, but this is what comes with your C to S now. And they came with my blue C to S. So uh, we'll try those. Then we have some brand new worker Gen 3 darts, which I finally got some of those, which is awesome. And then we'll try some Gen 2 workers. That did not fire well at all, only 112. That was a little bit better, 147, but it did fire. Worker Gen 3s. I wouldn't say that fired very well, 129. 136, not great. 136, I mean, they are firing, but just not very well. 130. Also sounds extra loud with these darts for whatever reason. Oof, it sounds like almost like a dry fire, 115. So these are not great. I'll do one more. Yeah, that's sounding worse and worse by the second. We'll go ahead and try some of the Gen 2 darts, but I bet they're even worse. Nope, no fire there. So this probably is not gonna fire. Oh, we fired both of them. So yeah, the Gen 2, don't work at all. I mean, if it doesn't come out of the barrel, it doesn't work. The other darts fired-ish, but I wouldn't say it's something you'd want to use in battle because they don't fire effectively or well at all. Uh, so really the only darts that are effective out of this barrel are the darts that it comes with, the Dart Zone Pro darts. So that is the exact same thing I had with my Gen 1 or Mark 1. So that's very disappointing, honestly. Uh, we will try the plastic barrel and hope that we can fire these darts a little bit better, but I'm not holding my breath. All right, so we have the plastic barrel in there now. All you have to do is undo four screws here and one screw under here and take the other metal barrel out and then put the plastic one in. I would recommend not over tightening this screw because it will go into the plastic. So just get that just slightly tightened there and then obviously lock down the other four screws and you should be set. Pretty easy re to replace. We'll go ahead and try some full links. Got a wide array of different types of darts here, so we'll go ahead and fire them off and see which ones do well and which ones don't. Start out with the Dart Zone Pro darts. 112, so quite a bit different performance-wise there. Another 112. This is an uh, Nerf AccuStrike dart. So that one did not fire. So still darts that don't work in sealed breaches do not seem to work here, at least so far. So we fired on the second try, 137 on the second try. We'll try it again, just to make sure. That one did fire, 124. We'll try some full length worker darts now. No go. And it's so weird, I still haven't figured out quite why it does that, but uh, this happened with my other uh, Dart Zone Pro Mark I, when you just, after you fire it, you pull back on this a little bit and then the dart will come out sometimes. It's very strange. We'll try it again. That one did fire, but not very well. <laughs> 84, one more. And no. And that one didn't fire when you pulled back. We'll try to clear that jam. All right. We have some AccuFake darts. I highly doubt these will work either. 
Oh, that one fired sort of, 111. And that one did come out at 77. Seems to be working slightly better than my last one. So that's a good sign, I guess. <laughs> that one did fire. That's a That was just a Nerf Elite Dart. I mean, I'm not sure why you'd want to use Nerf Elite Darts, but they do seem to work pretty well out of this system, besides the fact that they're completely inaccurate. 140 was that FPS. Well, that one went straight into the ground and was by far the shortest shot that actually fired uh, at 89. So can't say that works incredibly well either, to be honest. Uh, we'll go ahead and shoot. Uh, these are Adventure Force waffles now, which are made by the exact same company that makes this. You'd think they'd work in this system with the plastic barrel, but we will see. No go until you pull back. So no go there. Try one more. That one sort of fired, maybe 30 feet though, 75 FPS. One more try. That one did fire, uh, 127. So very inconsistent. Um, so I, honestly, this is the exact same. I mean, it performed slightly better in terms of actually firing darts than the, the Mark I I had, but still not very well and super inconsistent. So I really can't recommend using darts that don't fire out of sealed breaches. And honestly, the only long dart that does that is the Dart Zone Pro Dart that at least of the ones I shot, even the workers you'd think would, uh, did not work well. Um, so yeah, if you're gonna shoot full length darts, Dart Zone Pro Darts are the way to go with this system no matter, no matter what barrel you're using. We'll try half lengths. So I just have the Worker Gen 2s uh, and Dart Zone Pro Darts and Worker Gen 3s loaded up here. Still does not want to fire the Worker Gen 2s. Nope. One more. That one sort of fired. Uh, 85. <laughs> not very good. Dart Zone Pro Darts. 123. 132. 130. 135. So that's pretty nice performance if you want this for like an HVZ event. It was right around that 130, so this may be okay to use with Dart Zone Pro Darts, but honestly the accuracy is far worse out of the plastic barrel, but still much better obviously than most Nerf blasters, so keep that in mind. But uh, we will try Worker Gen 3s now. 97. 116. 97. That one did not fire. So, you know, the way the blaster sounds, it doesn't even sound very good when you're firing other darts besides the Dart Zone Pro darts. It sounds almost like a dry fire. Now, I have taken this thing apart. Definitely check out that mod guide uh, if you're interested in trying to do anything internally with this blaster, but it is very well padded. So you cannot uh, actually deprime this blaster because of the way this moves back and forth to uh, allow you to actually chamber full length darts. Uh, that's why the catch is actually in a position here and it moves back so then it doesn't align with the trigger so you can't release the catch until it's fully back forward. So keep that in mind. Uh, you probably will be dry firing this blaster quite a bit, um, but like I said, it's built pretty well so it should be able to hold up to that. Um, but let's go back inside and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, you guys. So. Basically, the blaster remains exactly the same as it did in the Mark I, besides obviously the color of the blaster and the upgrade to the stock not being able to collapse. They've kind of changed the molding in there of the locking mechanism, and I think that's an awesome addition. I would have liked to see them do some different things with the blaster. Uh, there's a lot of things that I love about this blaster and a lot of things I don't like. If you want to hear more in depth about those things definitely watch my previous two videos and you'll probably hear some of the other ones in another video when i compare this to the Cita s because there's a lot of awesome things about both blasters and obviously there's negatives about both blasters so stay tuned for that but this thing i'm really glad that it's back at target i think that's awesome that you can buy a basically pre-modded blaster online at target uh, for about $150. I think the price point is still a little high for me. I mean, 
The C to S is quite a bit lower than this and they're very similar blasters. This is a little bit higher quality, don't get me wrong, but very similar and the price of the C to S is about half of this. So that's uh, a big difference. Uh, we'll definitely go into more about that kind of a thing in the comparison video, but overall, if you want a blaster that's out of the box, ready to go, and you're okay buying the Dart Zone Pro Darts, I think this is a solid option. We'll give you solid performance upwards of 180, 188 FPS. That number was incredible. I think it shot a little bit harder, honestly, than my Mark I, which is, is cool. Um, maybe it was just an outlier, I'm not real sure, but we were getting some 180 shots in there, so that's uh, pretty interesting. But you could also tone it down with the plastic barrel and get in that 130 range, which I think is pretty cool also. But yeah, I think this is a pretty solid blaster. Obviously, it's very well made. There are some things that I think are a little weird and may bother some people. I think most of which is the, the priming because of how it slides the plunger tube back to be able to chamber full length darts. So that's something that you may like or not like. Obviously, these pins are a little annoying. I think they mainly did this just to be able to ship the blaster in a more compact form to save money there. I don't really have a huge problem with the pins other than the fact that they didn't size them properly to the blaster and I think that's very tacky. I stated all this in my first video so if you're really wanting to hear all my thoughts and opinions definitely check that out but overall I think it's cool that these are back on shelves. I think the darts are awesome. The grip of this blaster is awesome. There's a lot of really good things that came out of this and I hope that they continue to make other blasters in the pro line. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and as always, peace out.